Before we continue on with Ends of the Metrolink, I'd like to take some time to thank everyone for getting the Ends of the Metrolink episodes up to 1,000 views. It has really boosted my channel, and I'm glad you enjoy my content. I'd also like to thank those who I, who landed out info on that I either skipped past or forgot about in Ends of the Metrolink. Also, it has become apparent that Bombardier is really pronounced Bombardier, and even a user, you know who you are, joked around with my pronunciation of the former company. To whomever this message may concern, if you notice a missing F-59PH, it may or may not have in me. Back to the video. Hello everyone, a Genesis Engine here, and we're getting back to the locomotive side of things with a fan favorite locomotive. The locomotive in question is the EMD F59PHI. Now yes, I am aware that Amtrak Guy365 has already done a video on this engine and ends with the Amtrak. I personally recommend watching his video first before checking mine out. Oh, so you're approaching me? Guess you really want an end the Metrolink. Alright, I'll deliver. However, before we continue on with this episode, I suppose it's that time I have someone join in and help me with this episode. He hails from Mississippi, has been studying F-59 PHIs more than yours truly even has, despite me being in the same state as them for 15 years now, and is responsible for helping me on half of my DeviantArt stories. His name? Union Pacific 1982 Productions. Um, hello? Hey Genesis, thanks for having me on. Anyway, let's get started. EMD's F-59 PH model had become a huge success with two superpower commuter railroads, Metrolink and Go Transit. Go Transit needed these units to replace EMD F units, EMD F-40 PHs, and EMD GP-40 TCs while Metrolink needed new engines in general before the aforementioned engines were purchased. However, Amtrak, closest to Metrolink, had noticed that the engines were less fuel efficient and slower than their fleet of Genesis series. That wasn't good given that they were going to start up some West Coast state commuter trains, and they couldn't spare any Genesis locomotive to do the jobs due to their long distance services. Amtrak needed a more streamlined locomotive that would be faster and more fuel efficient for their San Diego and the Northwest Talgos, which were soon to undergo major rebrandings, not to mention that commuter service out of Sacramento was planned with routes to Bakersfield and San Jose. They already had cars being produced by Mortz and Nuts and Alstom using the Superliner as a basis, so they used the f 9 ph as a basis for their new locomotive. Metrolink, back down south, was also having way more passengers than they thought and needed more engines to run more trains consisting mainly of two or more coaches and a Bombardier cab car. Back with Amtrak, EMD had responded to Amtrak's calls with a locomotive that was faster, sleeker, and more fuel efficient than the F-59PH. That would soon be the EMD F-59PHI. Amtrak was indeed pleased with their new locomotive, while Metrolink walked closely nearby. Seeing how the commuter railroad could provide faster service than their F-59 PHs, they decided to get some for themselves. The railroad originally purchased 8 units in 1994 and numbered 874 to 881. However, there was a change of plans in 1995 and 2001. Over in Colorado, Philip Morris of Marlboro was planning Project Thunder a project that would feature the Marlboro Cigarette Company using the rails. However, the train never came to be due to the final train's cost at $44 million. The train would have been pulled by two F-59 PHIs 
numbered PMOX0001 and PMOX0002. But in the end, those engines were taken by Metrolink with PMOX0001 renumbered to 882 and PMOX0002 to 883 in 1995. That purchase was also the reason that prompted Metrolink to get more six cab cars from the Urban Transportation Development Corporation, or UTDC for short, in 1997. Fast forward to 2001, Via Rail was aiming to replace their aging LRCs from the 1970s. They had tested the F-39PHI in their route and eventual 21 units would come in. That was that they kept a decision, but no. Via Rail instead purchased 21 P42 DCs from General Electric. Metrolink decided to order some of the same F59 PHIs meant to go to Via Rail before. Four more F59 PHIs, numbered 884 to 887, were delivered later that year, bringing a total amount of Metrolink F59 PHIs to 14 units. Onto technical specifications, the F59 PHIs are basically the same as their F59 PH predecessors, but the I stands for the unit having an isolated cab. The unit runs a 710G3C engine compared to the F59 PH's 710G3A engine. The units came with a weight of 265,000 pounds. Like the PH's, the PHIs ran on Blomberg M trucks, about 3,200 horsepower, unlike the PH's 3,000. The units came under a length of 58 feet 2 inches, a width of 10 feet 7 inches, and a height of 15 feet 4 inches. The Metrolink F59 PHIs came factory new with Nathan P2s and old cast and new cast variants due to the air whistles on the cab cars and the K5LAs on the F59 PHs were starting to cause complaints for being too loud. But they still kept the K5LAs as an emergency horn. Here's some samples. Just like their predecessors, the F-59 PHIs were not indestructible. On January 6, 2003, Metrolink train 210 slammed into a pickup truck and derailed in the city of Burbank. As Alec mentioned in the last episode, Bombardier cab car number 608 was totaled, but F-59 PHI 883 was lucky to escape without damage. On January 26, 2005, Two Metrolink trains were involved in a major accident in Glendale. 886 with the F-59 PHI involved in the accident, pushing train 100 to LA before Bombardier cab car 625 slammed into the Jeep on the tracks. As stated in previous episodes, both of the cab cars were damaged beyond repair, while the engines 886 and 873 were undamaged. Passengers were lucky to escape death with only five injured on November 22, 2008, when a Metrolink train sideswiped the rearmost locomotive of a BNSF freight train. F-59PH number 877 suffered minor damage as the train was moving slowly when it hit the freight train. The accident happened only two months and ten days after the infamous train smash at Chatsworth. 877 was repaired and returned to service. Metrolink was definitely having fun with their units, but something was brewing up north. Modernization. On Amtrak, California, two then-new Siemens SC-44s were being tested on the Capitol Corridor and San Joaquin trains. Once the chargers were approved for service, other engines were sent south to the Surfliner trains and replaced the F-59 PHIs there. That's when Metrolink heard about the Surfliner's orders and decided they needed to pass the domination torch to another engine. This engine would take place in passenger service for the F-59 PHs, F-59 PHIs, and their only F-40 PH number 800, as well as supplementing the MP-36 PH-3Cs, especially after 893 broke down and was subsequently retired afterwards. This engine would be revealed as the EMD F-125, 
these engines were cleaner, faster, and overall more reliable than the older fleet. So in 2017, the EMD F59PHIs were retired from regular service. This leaves only Coaster and Amtrak California to carry on the legacy of the F59PHI. With Coaster getting more charges to replace their F59PHIs, it's all down to Amtrak California. As of now, however, it has been noted that by 2023, all F59PHIs in California would no longer be running. Although not having lasted as long as the Bombardier cab cars and the F59PHs at 23 years, they definitely proved their worth. They will always be a part of the history of Metrolink, the Southern California Regional Rail Authority. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Engine the Metrolink. UP, thank you for being here to help me. Glad you know more about my state's motive power than I do myself. You're welcome, man. Thanks for having me here. All right. As for you viewers, stay tuned for next time when I discuss the disasters that are the Guardian fleet, aka the Hyundai Rotom CTC5 cab cars. Stay tuned and thank you again for watching.